Hello again and welcome back to my channel. I'm part one of a two-part series looking into the potential and possibility of using epoxy resin in outdoor projects. Now this stemmed from a friend of mine who got in touch and asked me would I be able to do a house number in resin form uh, inlaid into wood. So I said well it's quite straightforward to do that's not an issue but I just didn't know whether um, epoxy resin is suitable to be using outdoors. Now, just as disclaimer at this point, I do not have the answer to this question at this point. Part one is the setting up of the experiment and part two will unfortunately be in the autumn after exposing these to a great British summer. So I did look at the fine print of the glass cast three that I use and to be honest, in the small print, it does say, although glass cast has high UV properties, it is not suitable for outdoor use. So glass cast certainly won't be endorsed in this video, but for the purposes of an experiment and to suitability to see maybe would it work, let's give it a try. So what's gonna be happening? Well, we are gonna conduct a short experiment and I'm going to tell you about what my plan is for this I'm going to tell you about how I potentially am going to try and control the variables and then we are going to leave it for a few months and see what happens so I have got five of these okay which have been very kindly CNC'd for me because I haven't got a CNC machine yet okay hopefully one for the future so we've got five number fours okay i am going to pour i'm going to make one batch of resin so it's all going to come from the same batch of resin and the wood which is beech is all from the same slab of wood just again to can try and control those variables i am going to tint it with some solid green emerald green tinting pigment again so it's all exactly the same what is going to be different though, on the five different fours, is I am gonna apply different finishes over the top and see how they react in the rain, the sun, the wind, and the great British weather of the northwest of England. So, um, here are the finishes that we're gonna be applying. So, I have got some outdoor varnish. Okay, I thought that'd be a good one. I have got some rock sill wood protection. All right, which again is suitable for outdoor use. I am actually going to coat one of them with a coat of glass cast three as well. So that'd be interesting to see how that can compare to the others. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, I'm gonna use some Heidelberg Pro Lignum, which is a hard wax oil, which is for indoor use. But again, for the purposes of comparison, gotta be worth a try and I'm also going to leave one burr so just wood and resin um, inlaid into the number four and then I'm going to put them on a piece of OSB outside in the back garden which is south facing and I'm going to leave them for three months and see what happens I'm going to crack on with getting these sanded down with the vacuum clamp and then getting the resin pour ready and getting it ready to stick outside I'll see you at the end
Right, and we are back in the garage after a few days of the resin curing. Now, I am not going to win any design awards for the high quality finish of these resin pours, but that's not the point. The point is, is this stuff going to work outside? Now, uh, particularly that one, but I found a use for this one. Oh, just a quick point. Always make sure you rest it on some polypropylene sheet because something like that might happen and you weren't expecting it. So the next stage is to apply the different finishes. Now, just to, again, to try and control variables, if you like, this is what I'm gonna do. Um, the fifth one is actually still curing inside because that's had the clear glass cast coating applied over it. So I'm gonna give that another day or two before that joins the experiment, if you like. So um, number one is going to be, one and two are gonna be the two that are actually designed for outdoor use. So number one is gonna be the rock sill. Number two is going to be the outdoor varnish. Number three and number four are the internal finishes, if you like. So the Heidelberg Pro Lignum. And, oh, sorry, and number four is going to be this one, which I over poured, but I'm going to sand that down. And I'm actually just going to sand this down to so just basically going to polish it up. So no finish on this one at all as a control, if you like, to see, compare that against the other finishes. Everything's going to get two coats. Uh, we'll, you know, let it dry in between. Might just give it a little fine sand down, and then we are going to apply it to a board. So they're all going to be in the same place outside in the garden, and we're going to leave it for three months. Okay, so let's get up to me uh, pop-up workbench outside and crack on with getting the finishes on.
And that pretty much brings us to the end of part one of this experiment. All we've got to do now is sit back, relax, watch and see how the next few months unfolds. I'd be really interested to hear from you in the comments section as to what you think is going to happen, which um, finish do you think will fare better. Uh, and also, if you were going to do an experiment like this, would you have done anything differently? So get in touch via the comments and let me know what you think. I suppose the key issue really is going to be the relationship, if you like, between the resin and the wood when the wood expands and contracts under different climatic conditions. Like today, it's beautifully sunny today. It's probably going to be raining tomorrow. So let's just see what happens and we will revisit it in the autumn. Okay, take care everyone. I'll see you soon. Look after yourselves and thanks very much.